so I'm guessing that you all would have seen the announcement by now, but Hipiri will be opening to the public on 24th of May, taking the title of the UK's new tallest and fastest coaster when it does. However, if you're impatient like me, you'll be thinking that the track work was finished a few weeks ago, at the start of March, and the park has already opened for the year as well. Why then do we still have nearly another two months to wait before Hyperior opens? What's holding them up? First of all, we need to consider that the track isn't the only part of the ride that needs to be finished before it can open. There's the station and the surrounding area for a start, as well as hundreds of sensors that need to be installed all around the ride. You would hope that these are easy compared to the track work, but another UK park learned the hard way that the finishing touches can easily derail the opening of a new coaster. Back in March of 2010, Alton Towers still hadn't finished paving the queue line for 13, even by the day before it opened. The stress on the park and the employees at this time must have been immense, and I would not be surprised if Towers had to fork out a hefty sum to get some more contractors on site to finish everything on time. After that incident, I'd imagine that the theme parks owned by Merlin will all be a bit more cautious about underestimating the timescales for completing everything after the track. This is especially relevant to all of us waiting for Hyperia, as we don't know how much is actually going to be done around the ride in terms of effects and theming. I've got a feeling that it's not going to be as heavily themed as the areas for the Swarm or Nemesis Inferno, but Thought Park are actually really good at putting nice touches around a coaster, even when they're not heavily themed. Just look at all the rock work and Aztec touches around Colossus. By Hyperia, even if doing the bare minimum, they at least have to make it look a bit less like a construction site, at the ride plaza, and hopefully make the lake a little bit less brown and muddy looking. One effect that we do know the park will have to install though, is the splashdown, and this isn't going to be a small or easy task. The simplest way to have a splashdown is what's done on the Matterhorn bobsleds at Disneyland. Here, the track actually goes underwater slightly, forcing the bobsleds into the pool and creating an effect most similar to a log flume. However, this isn't really suitable for a high intensity thrill ride, as it's less consistent and controllable, and being hit in the face with a splash at 60 miles an hour doesn't really sound fun to me. An alternative is to attach scoops to the bottom of the ride vehicles, so that only these need to go through the water. This is what B&M does with their dive coasters, such as Shikra or Griffin at the Busch Gardens parks, but it's limited to coasters with really wide trains, so that the scoops can be well outside of the track. We know Hyperia is just going to be two across seating though, so this won't work either. The only option left is to have what's technically called a water spout, and examples of these can be found on Manta at SeaWorld Orlando, or Shambhala at Port Aventura World. This is the most complex solution, as it uses a number of water fountains to create the effect of a splashdown without the trains ever touching the water. It requires sensors and a sophisticated control system to make sure that the jets fire at the right time to make the effect work, and the jets themselves probably aren't simple bits of kit to install. It will be parts like these that are controlling the opening day to Hyperia, since they have a long lead time, and Thought Park won't want to open the ride without them. Another thing that has to be completed before opening is the testing of the new ride to ensure that it's safe and has been built correctly. When following the testing of Nemesis Reborn, we know that the tests start by running the ride with weighted dummies, and then progress to empty trains, but as someone looking in from the outside, there's no way to tell what else has been done. As an engineer though, I'd say it's highly likely that some sort of failure scenario tests will need to be carried out as well. These will simulate different faults around the ride system, and the tests will be designed to make sure that even in the event of a fault, the ride is still completely safe. Now Nemesis started testing in early January and didn't open until March, so it's possible that the full testing program to take up to six weeks to complete, if we assume that there was no free time for Nemesis between testing and opening. This then takes up most of the time until the 24th of May, so I'd expect to see Hyperia starting to test soon as well. There will also be some spare time baked into the plan before Hyperia is meant to open, as there's no guarantee that the ride will pass all of its tests first try, and it could even fail on the very last test run. Whilst delays to construction work could lose a couple of days, a failed test run could see the park set back weeks if it needs to get some hardware replaced. Adding some spare time before the grand opening means that the ride still won't be ready late, even in a worst case scenario. There's actually another incident or a park profile of this as well though. Once again, it's Alton Towers at the receiving end of the bad luck, but this time with their 2013 edition, the Smiler. This was meant to open on the 23rd of May 2013, but started experiencing teething problems the week before, and required Alton Towers to shut off the whole of the act sector for a few days. It ended up being opened a week later, on the 31st of May, and whilst this delay was only a week, 
The park and ride got so much bad press, including the name Fulton Towers, which I think is hilarious. What this did though, was undo all the hard work that had gone into building up the hype for the new attraction. I definitely don't envy the people in Towers' complaints department who had to deal with all the angry customers, who not only missed out on the new attraction when they visited, but also couldn't get on some of the existing ones like Oblivion. I thought Park would have to be daft not to take heed of this cautionary tale, and make sure that there's plenty of time to find and sort any of these teething problems before Hyperia opens. Setting an opening day turns out to be quite the balancing act then, as if it's too early, then the park might risk delays that mean the ride can't open as advertised, but if it's too late, then the park will just hemorrhage money from not having their new attraction to draw in the crowds. I'm glad that we won't have to wait too long to get on Hyperia though, as it feels like forever since we got a new coaster of the scale in the UK, and it's been even longer since Thorpe Park last got a new major attraction. Will you be visiting Thorpe Park for Hyperia's grand opening? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then like and subscribe. It would mean a lot. Until next time though, I've been Coaster Shark.